I'm Don Dixon, and I want to uh, thank you for hanging out with me today. Uh, last week, I was a little bit lax in, in getting our vlogs out. Uh, I was just a little bit under the weather, and I'm still sort of under the weather, but I'm um, so excited about this area of discussion that we've been having over the last few weeks. I wanted to be sure to follow through with you because now we're getting to uh, really a very exciting part of this discussion. We're going to do a bar today. Next time we get together, we're going to do a hop. We're going to do a few different structures where I'm going to show you all the examples. Topo map, contour map, Navionics, and a detail map that we actually got out on the water. And then I want you to understand after seeing all that why it is so important that we get good at this area of map and interpretation. So when I got to thinking about <laughs> how many quote professional fishermen we have out there today, you know, they're all over the place. They're all over social media. They're on YouTube. Uh, some are on television. Why is it then this subject that is so important to me that I'm telling you is everything when it comes to uh, the bottom line of successful fishing. Why isn't somebody else talking about it? So my question is, we have 20 or 30 or 50,000 professional fishermen today. How come nobody, nobody, not one person, talks about detail, mapping, and interpretation of structure? When I'm telling you, it's your total answer in successful fishing. Why isn't anybody else talking about it? I'll give you the answer. They don't know about it. They don't understand. They really think that they can get a topo map today, whether it's paper map or whether it's on, a, on their computer or on their depth side or through Navionics. They figure they can take that and just go out and start throwing the latest, hottest lure and just go catch fish. Think it's going to be all okay. It's all going to work out. Well, the bulk of the season, it doesn't all work out. And many of you who have gone about your fishing like that, like I used to, have found that out. If, if it's that easy, everybody go buy a map and then buy, go buy the new lure and go out there and catch fish till their arm fell off. But the bulk of the season, it doesn't happen. We know it doesn't. We've all tried it. It doesn't work. So if I'm right, and I know I am, Buck proved it to me. I'm trying to prove it to you. So if I told you in the beginning of this discussion, which I did, that we have to identify the exact spots out there on that lake in deep water where we're going to meet up with the fish. We got to find the exact spots. We're talking about drilling your finger in the water, the exact spots. We have to know what a structure really looks like, the details of it. So then we'll be able to fish it. And if we don't get that, our fishing success is going to remain the same as it has for years and years and years. We have to get good at this. Now, I thought a good way of proving that to you, and I don't have to keep showing stringers of fish to you. I know that. I've been showing stringers of fish for 50 years, for goodness sake. I think everybody sort of understands that, you know, I, I can catch a fish. But it's not because I'm so cool or I'm so great. It's because Buck Perry taught me. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I'd still be floundering around like everybody else. So I'm going to try to convince you through the next couple of weeks by showing you real structures, what the map says and what the real detail says once we go to work out there. And I've already talked the last uh, couple of times we met about a procedure that we can follow. That once we follow that procedure, we're going to end up with a detailed map of any and all structures we ever come across. And then, and only then, will we be able to see it, will we be able to fish it properly, and arrive at the fish, and see the result in the live well. And again, let me address this right now too. I don't particularly care if you keep fish for dinner or if you release everything you catch. The idea, the fun in fishing, is catching the fish. So if, if we want to enjoy the sport and have some sense of satisfaction, 
we have to get good at mapping and interpretation, detailed mapping and interpretation of structure. And I'm going to start off today by showing you a bar. A bar that I found in 1978. And I thought it was a good bar that I could do some teaching with up at my summer schools. And I'm going to show you that bar, but I'm going to show you what I saw on the contour map first. I'm just going to put it on the screen here, this area of structure. And this is what's on this map, this very map. I took the picture from this map. And then I'm going to show you on Navionics a picture of that same structure. And then I'm going to steal a little piece from a mapping interpretation tape I did with a bunch of students at my summer school. I'm going to use just a little piece of it and show you how we followed those procedures which we've learned over the last two sessions. We followed the procedures, we got a good detail map of this structure, and I'm going to show you this little piece of tape. I'm going to steal it from that video that we made years ago, and show you what that structure really looks like after doing a detail map. And just to pique your interest, <laughs> I can tell you after the first time we mapped that structure, we went and fished it in the first 20 minutes we caught about, it was either 10 or 12 big northern pike. And over the years, this particular structure has produced thousands of northern pike. It's really a pike structure. And we just caught, I mean, every time you went there, you would catch fish and good fish. I think the first time we fished it, we had four or five fish that were in the 15 pound uh, class, which is big northern pike. That's big adult school size fish. And they remained there for the nearly 20 years that I taught that school up there. Every time we went to this structure, bang, bang, bang. If you want to go catch some northern, guaranteed. But it only became possible after we got our good detailed map of the structure and we knew what was there and we knew where the contact point was and we knew how we had to fish it in order to cover the entire structure and catch a bunch of fish. So I'm going to show it to you today, and I hope you get to picture what I'm trying to create today is this sense in you that you can understand once and for all just a contour map isn't enough. Navionics isn't enough. Your two, three, four, five thousand dollar graph isn't enough. You've got to do a detail of what's down there from a fishing standpoint. You have to see it like the fish sees it in order to be able to fish it properly. So let's get started. Now this bar, I'll put my map away here because the wind's blowing. This bar was on the back side of a huge island. One side of the other of the shoreline before there's these cutbacks probably a couple of hundred yards. It's a big, broad island. Just using my general interpretation, when I see that land mass, I'm expecting this bar to be rather broad. It's going to continue under the water, kind of like it looks above water. I wouldn't expect, in other words, to find this nice, narrow, ridge-like bar running out off of this land mass that's a couple of hundred yards wide, I don't know, you know, or at least 150 yards wide. I would expect it to be a broad bar with multiple features. And because we're in the Lake of the Woods area, let's face it, everything leads to everything. Almost every structure you run into is going to lead to deep water. That's just a general interpretation of the area that we're, that we're fishing, uh, Lake of the Woods. Glacier uh, formed all this stuff, and there's structure everywhere, deep water everywhere. But we have to now draw a picture of this particular structure so we can fish it, so we can arrive at the contact point. So we're going to follow our procedures. I'm going to show you on the film how we do that, just what we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. We're going to talk about the difference. What's on the contour map? What's on Navionics? And what does it really look like? Remember I talked a couple of weeks ago about how we're seeing everything from a top view. We're seeing top view on the map, top view on Navionics, but we also are going to be having a top view of our detail map. It's going to be a top view. We're going to draw this thing out. But once we've done that, remember I said we have to mentally 
convert that top view into a side view so we can see exactly how to go about fishing it. Where are the spots on this structure that I need to fish? What I wanted my students to understand right off the bat was that we have to follow these procedures, the procedures that I've laid out to you over the last couple of weeks, in order to get our answer. And the first thing was to drive out off the crown of that bar, heading into deep water, and establish two things. One, does it lead all the way from the shallows to the deep? Two, what is the final break? Now, I'm going to be watching my depth sonder on the way as I'm traveling off of this bar to see where all of my break lines are for further reference. But I'm most interested in my final break to deep water. And as you recall, we discussed it must be between 14 and 17 feet or deeper for you and I to like it. So this is the first step. We're going to run on off and see if it leads and see what the final break is. So let me jump over to the film and show you how we did this. Now, as I pointed out to you last week, I don't want to make this a long, drawn-out process trying to get a couple of simple answers. I want to do it on one pass. One pass out. Where does it break? And does it lead all the way? That's what I got to find out. Well, on that particular pass, I found out everything I needed to know. It did, in fact, break deep. It broke at 45 feet into 60. And it led all the way. It led from the bank to 60 feet of water. This will be a productive structure. Now all I had to do was discover the size and the shape of this structure. Technically, we'll call this step three. We have to jump on our primary brake line, follow it all around the bar in order to get the size and the shape. And we're careful to throw markers on any unusual feature on that brake line. As I was running off making that very first pass on that structure, I noticed there wasn't just one brake line, but there were literally four. There was a shallow brake line that I wasn't too concerned about because the structure was so big. I mean, I'm concerned about it. Uh, my primary brake line really was the second brake line on that structure because the structure was so large that I knew that that shallowest brake line probably is not going to give me the size and the shape of that structure. But the brake line I considered to be the primary was 25 feet. It was 25 feet in braking. So we jumped the 25 foot brake line, started following it, and as you can see, I'm going to throw this tape up here, you can see I'm traveling around there and my, my students are following me around and following in the wake of my boat and paying careful attention to where I was throwing the markers. Once those markers were laid out, uh, then we had to go and make a second pass because we had multiple brake lines. And that second brake line was around 35 feet. So we then jumped on the deeper brake line and started to follow that to see if my features that showed up on the first pass on the 25 foot brake line if they would be consistent on the 35 foot brake line. In many cases they will be but not always. So we can't take anything for granted. We want the exact answer. So we follow the 35 all the way around. And when we're finished with that, so now we're starting to get a real picture of what this thing looks like. But we're not done because remember I said it broke the final break into that deep water was occurring at 45 feet where we passed over it on the very first pass we saw it break from 45 to 60 I mean kind of right now typical for the area of geographical area we're fishing that's typical 45 to 60 pow it's kind of stuff I wish I had in Florida <laughs> fish all year long and have structure like that. That'd be great. Any rate, so now we still have to make another pass to make sure that at the 45 foot something different doesn't happen that didn't show up at the 25 or the 35. So here we go again. I'm stealing from my tape. Now we're running the 45 foot brake line. And as you see, as you notice, we start going around that very first marker. It kind of makes a little bit of a right hand turn there and really reaches out. 
before it turns around and comes back in. And then the other features, which normally are getting a little flattened out when you get to those deeper depths, but in this case it was not. It was very definite. All of the features were still very definite. And every time I came to one of those features, I looked up and I was directly in line with the markers that I threw on the first pass. So this structure was really taking shape. Normally by this time, I pretty much know where the contact point is, but I still haven't proven it. I have to prove it. I, I literally have to do some more work. And as you recall, that step four is to take soundings off of every distinct feature that we had. And in this case, we have four. And once those soundings were taken, we've got a map, we've got the size and the shape, we have the features. Now we have the soundings. And I'm going to show you that final picture. And then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. When I showed you that bar on this map, could you have pointed to the fish? If that's all you had was this. Let me answer for you. No, you couldn't. Nor could I, nor could Buck Perry. Let's take uh, a look at our Navionics. There's our structure. If that's all you had, could you point to the fish? I'm going to answer for you. No, you couldn't. Now I want to ask you, with that detailed map, I could even take that and draw in my cabbage weed. Comes out to about 12 feet, 10, 12 feet. Cast all the shallows in there, run my shallower brake lines, pattern troll. Uh, Go out and loop around the contact point, troll down that brake line. We catch fish on every one of those fingers. Fish hit the contact point, move move along that brake line. It's an uphill brake line. Keeps getting a little bit shallower. Further you go, time to get to that last marker. It's breaking at 35, not 47, which it breaks out at the end. It's a little bit uphill, coming uphill. But just tipping. So, I'm asking you. Can you look at my detail map and point to the fish? You should be able to. So what's the longest, narrowest, sharpest, deepest, deepest break to the deepest water in that area? Walker number one. You can pick it out every time. Interpreting that detail map is not hard. Now let me take and mentally convert that for you, but I'm going to actually draw it for you. I'm going to convert it here like I want you to, what we're looking at right there. Our detail, top view of this, let me convert it and give you a side view of this bar. There it is. So now that I have that detail map, I know how to fish it. I know what it looks like. I know how to fish it. I know where the contact point is. And if I go through my procedures, checking the shallows on the cast, checking all of the cabbage weed up in there, throwing all the shallows, do, uh, cast all of that. Cast the crown of that bar with a shallow crankbait. Fish the 15-foot brake line, which I didn't draw in. It's pretty shallow. <coughs> pretty shallow, especially in that clear water. But I, I would troll it. I would fish it. But then I'm going to my primary, which is a 25-foot brake line, and fully expecting to catch some fish. And, but if I don't, then I'm going to the 35. And if I still don't catch any fish making good pattern passes, trolling passes, then I'll make a pass on a 40, 45 feet. And that would be a 700 spoon plug or a short line 800 spoon plug on wire. Bumping that bar, bumping that bar 45 feet. If I still don't have a fish, I'm going to anchor my boat out there pretty close to the end of that long bar-like feature. It's breaking at 47 into 60 feet. I'm going to anchor down and throw a heavy jig down into that 60 feet and bring that rascal up over that 47 feet with a slow speed control. And if I still don't catch a fish, I have all the confidence in the world. I found a great structure. I thoroughly fished it, checking all depths and all speeds in all of the right places, thanks to my detail map, and I didn't catch a fish. I can leave that spot knowing that they're not there right now. 
they're going to be there different weather, different time. They're going to be there. And now I know exactly what's there and how to fish it. But they're not there now. I can't remember a time I ever went to that bar and didn't catch fish. I can't remember one time. I'm talking almost 20 years teaching schools up there. And as many times as I went down there with students, do a little mapping or fish that bar, I, I can't remember one time ever going down and not catching fish. In fact, I thought it was funny. When we were down there doing, making, that, making that movie about how to detail map a bar. We saw a couple of boats going by, aimlessly drifting with minnows, you know, just drifting by there, you know, somewhere around the crown of the bar, around eight, 15 feet, something like that, trying to catch a walleye. One of the best pike bars I ever saw in my life, just you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of fish. And they're just aimlessly drifting by, hoping to catch one, hoping to catch fish. I always hope that the fish will become active and move, become active. Because we know we need activity to really make the big catches. But I don't go about my fishing hoping to catch a fish, just hoping. That's my only resort. I hope to catch a fish. No, I expect to catch fish. I expect to. Because we catch fish on purpose. Not by accident, not just getting lucky and hitting a fish. I'm talking about locating the spots through your detail map and locate the spots, be thorough in your fishing and catch the school of fish. That's what I'm talking about. I expect to do that. Now I have to get some activity in the fish to get the whole school to move. When that happens, the catches are unbelievable. But when it doesn't happen, I still am going to catch five, six, eight, ten 10 fish. I, I expect, fully expect to. I don't hope to run into a fish. I go every day out on the lake. I'm going out there with the intention of catching some fish on purpose, regardless of the lake type, regardless of species, catching fish on purpose. And the reason that we, that we do, the reason we're so successful so often is because we do our detail mapping and interpretation of structure. And when we're done, we know how to fish that rascal. We know exactly where to put our lures and how to best do it. So I'm going to close with this. Why aren't the 50,000 other, quote, professional fishermen teaching this? Because they don't know it. They're still hoping to catch fish. They're hoping that they're mapped. They're hoping that their new graph, they're hoping that their $50,000, $60,000 boat is going to make all the difference. They have all of the best rods and reels and all of that. But the most important thing in fishing is the where. 95% of all that water has no fishing. The where is the most important thing in fishing. And it's something that nobody else talks about. So people wonder, what made you, you know, at this late date, come back into the game? Because I can't stand the fact that nobody's teaching the truth about successful fishing. And it's all centered around this where, where in my lake. If you hope to turn on a $5,000 graph and just run around out here in this lake and let your graph show you where, show you some fish. You may never catch one. General mapping interpretation, detail mapping and interpretation, understanding your lake types, your, your species of fish, the season of the year, all of the things that we've talked about prior to this. But in the end, all of that was to get us to this point where we're detail mapping our structure. And if you don't do it, your success will never change. You have to get good. And the way we get good is following those simple procedures. Go out and do it. Practice a little bit. Step one, go off your structure. Does it lead all the way? What's the final break to deep water? Where did it break? Where is my break line? Do I have one or do I have multiples? Follow them around. Get the size and the shape. Take your soundings and then go to fishing. It's not that hard. But yet nobody talks about it. Nobody understands it. And I'm hoping that you're starting to get the picture.
If this is new to you, please trust me. Trust me when I tell you. It makes all the difference. Some of the best catches that pictures of catches that I have received. I see my guy out there in a 14 foot aluminum boat with a 20 horse engine on the back holding a huge stringer of fish because he understands that's the wear in fishing that counts, not what boat he's in, not how big it is, not how pretty it is, not how many horsepower. You know, most of those guys running boats today in the tournaments, most of the tournament guys running running motors that have more horsepower than, than our cars. That's supposed to somehow translate into catching fish. It doesn't. The wear in fishing is what counts. And we can't get it all from this. You open up this map. I can show you a hundred thousand structures just in this 25 mile area where we held our school. Structures everywhere. But you've just agreed with me. You looked at this structure that we just mapped on this map and it doesn't look anything like what the map shows. We couldn't fish it from this. We can only guess. But after getting our detail map, we know exactly where the fish are. And we know exactly how to fish it. So I hope that that opened your eyes a little bit. And the next time we get together, I'm going to show you how, just really how important that is following those procedures. And again, I'm going to steal a little piece from our summertime school where I was training some students on mapping a hump the next time we get together. With all that being said, be sure to follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done it. It's important to us, and we appreciate you, and we'll see you the next time.